So the second part of this 5.2 material, we've done the multiplying. Now it's time for the dividing. And same as when we did dividing after multiplying in fractions, it's really the same thing. What you need to do is flip the second fraction and then write it as a multiplication question. So this is what it's saying. You invert the divisor, factor, reduce, and multiply. And so it's really the same as what we were doing before. Factoring and reducing is the key to this, but you do need to rewrite. There is an alternate way to write these. And so if I took C as an example, you could write as 3x squared y all over 8xy squared, and fraction lines are dividing. So that could be divided by, look at this monstrous thing. So this complex um, question is something that you're going to see in Math 50. It is the same as this question. So don't get hung up on how shocking this looks. It's exactly the same thing. And so um, this is an alternate way to write the same question. This one's way scarier. And we're going to focus on this way because it's more comfortable, but it is exactly the same way. So with these ones, when I was doing the fractions, I would simply invert the second fraction, multiply by the reciprocal is the way we would have said it in fraction land, um, and then multiply across the top, and then reduce. So we get a final answer for this one of 2 over 3. Again, multiple ways to get there. I'm not going to bother saying them all again. Hopefully you found your way and are happy moving forward to the answer. So C, I'm going to rewrite it so it is a multiplication question. If they are all monomials, I find students are usually happier multiplying across the top, multiplying across the bottom, and then simplifying. If you want to get in and cross things out, you sure can. But again, I'm going to try and streamline my instructions on this one for the most common um, thought process. I apologize if it's not yours. And then simplify these ones out. And so I'd get a final answer dividing both top and bottom by 12. And simplifying my expression, my variables, I'd get three y's on the top. I'd get a six on the bottom that divide this by 12 and divide that by 12. And then I'd get two x's on the bottom. Couple more in these monomials, nothing too new. You might be tempted to reach in and reduce. I'll just show them quick. Getting to your final answer here. And the last one, taking the time to rewrite them. <clears throat> I think I can just do it in my, my mind, but I can't. <clears throat> you could get in and cross things out like this, or you can just multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, and then reduce. That's the way I'm going to show in my work here, not the only way. we'd end up with a final answer of x over y. So the next part of division kicks it up to the binomial. So those were all monomials, making up my rational expressions being multiplied. And again, with these ones, we're going to rewrite to multiplication. We're going to factor, and we're going to reduce. Right? Three things to do. None of them um, are overly wordy, but there's a lot involved in them. So the top part of my, oh, sorry, rewrite this one. That's why I just wrote the instructions. <laughs> Should follow them. Rewriting it to a multiplication problem, flipping the, the last fraction top for bottom. Common factoring the top of the first rational expression, common factoring the bottom of the first rational expression, common factoring the top of the second rational expression, and common factoring the bottom of 
the second rational expression. This beautiful moment of crossing everything out that is exactly the same top and bottom, isn't that satisfying? I'd get, and you could cross some numbers out here. Um, I'm going to write it as 6 over 36, or my final answer of 1 sixth. And there's not a whole lot about that original question that makes you look at it and go, yeah, that's probably 1 sixth. Okay, a couple more on the page. I'm going to do this one and then I'll throw the answers of the last two up here to give a shot at. So common, oh sorry, not common factoring, a trinomial, negative six. It is a simple trinomial. And that gives me the numbers in my binomial factored form. Good old shortcut. Common factoring the bottom here would leave me with an x minus three in the brackets. Oh, I didn't rewrite it. Bad idea, Marianne. I'm going to rewrite it here. I think I could do it, but I can't. I will make a mistake. There we go. So rewriting it. Now I'm ready to factor the top. Nothing I can do. Factoring the bottom. X plus 2 and X minus 2. And then I get so excited about this part. Crossing things out that are exactly the same top and bottom. If you want to cross out some numbers, go for it. I'm going to try and be consistent and do this step that sort of gets us to where we're at and then takes it, the, allows us to, to kind of pause there for a moment and then take it one step further. So this would be divided by two and this would be divided by two for my final answer of two x squared all over x minus two. So the bottom two on this page, take the time to rewrite them. Don't make the mistake that I nearly did here. And I'll give you your final answers. I will then talk through how I got to those. So showing my thought processes and talking this through for B, I'm going to rewrite it. I almost forgot again. Flipping top for bottom. And starting with the top of the first rational expression, common factoring it with a 3. The bottom of that first rational expression, I see a 2 is common. So I'd pull it out. Top of the second rational expression, I see it has a common factor of 4. So factoring that out. And down below, at the bottom of the second rational expression, I have an x common to those two terms. So factoring that out, I'm left with that bracket. Now I get all of this awesome step where everything is the, is the same top and bottom I get to cross out. You could cross out some numbers. I'm going to rewrite it and then take that pause step to then take it one step further. I'm going to divide the top by 2 and the bottom by 2, so I get a final answer of 6 over x. <clears throat> For d, my thought process on this, uh, rewrite it. Common, or no, factoring the top of the first rational expression is a difference of squares. Nothing I can do with the denominator of the first rational expression. Top of the second rational expression would give me an x minus 5 in the bracket with a 2 out front. And, oh, it's a trinomial, wouldn't you know? We got negative 15 at the top of my number puzzle. I can use the shortcut, so I'm going to slap it down with a shortcut in factored form. Anything that is exactly the same top and bottom, I can cross out and rewrite where I'm left over with. There's kind of a pause point here. Dividing the top by 2 and the bottom by 2, I get to my final answer of this x minus 3 over 2x. I'm just going to extend this video one more. There's another one that is so satisfying to do if we have the time. I'm going to write it out. You might need a separate piece of paper. Um, 
This one used to be on an old worksheet that I used to give, and it was so fun to do. So we got 14x minus 7 all over x squared plus 3x minus 4. That's going to get multiplied by, on the top, an x squared plus 6x plus 8. And on the bottom, a 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. Doesn't this look like fun? Come on, this looks like fun. We got divided by an x squared plus 2x on the top. And on the bottom, a trinomial, but a simple one. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite this as a multiplication because I can deal with a multiplication. That's 14x minus 7. Sorry if that was messy at the top there. Just recopying everything here or copying everything. So many little places you can make a mistake. And then I'm going to set to factoring everything. So in this one, I'm going to give you a bit of a cheat because this one is something I can't shortcut. So factoring everything, um, I'd have a 7 and a 2x minus 1. This simple trinomial, I'd have a negative 4. So 1 and 4, that'd be a negative and a 2 and a 2. A negative 1 and a positive 4 would satisfy my number puzzle. So that would give me an x minus 1 and an x plus 4. Everything about my first rational expression is all simplified. My second rational expression, a bit of a beast, I have plus 8 at the top of my number puzzle. So 1 and 8 and 2 and 4. Everything about this one's positive. So plus 2, plus 4. Again, this is a shortcutable one because I have an, a 1 out in front of my x squared. The bottom part here, not shortcutable. So I'd have negative 6 at the top of my number puzzle, because remember, it's 2 times negative 3. So 1 and 6 and 2 and 3. I would have to have a negative 2 and a negative 3 to add together to give me, oh no, that's not right. Sorry, let's do that again. How about, uh, ooh, see, so almost fell into the trap. How about a positive 6 and a negative 1? That's how we get to the positive 5. So that's what going to be what decomposes my middle term. So I'm going to show my work over here. I'd have 2x squared minus x plus 6x minus 3. Factoring by grouping. And the second two terms. And finishing it up. Oops. That's a 1. And writing it in place, so satisfying to write it in place. And on to the next, another trinomial. Oh my goodness, running out of space. I'd have negative 3 at the top of my number puzzle, so 1 and 3, only way to do it. How about a negative 1 and a positive 3? Shortcuttable, so x minus 1 and x plus 3. Bottom part, common factoring that. Whew. Now comes the fun part. You ready for this? Everything that is exactly the same top and bottom, I can cross out. Doesn't matter where it is, so long as it's exactly the same, I can reduce it. Are you ready for this? Look at all that's left over. On the top we have a 7, and on the bottom we have an x. So that is your final answer of that monstrous, monstrous question.